What is the dilly? Yo, mic check one, two, one, two. All right, I can hear myself. All right, everybody, what's crack a lacking? It's your boy Tech G in the place to be. So, I want to make this video real quick, uh, kind of responding to an email message I got today or early this morning in regards to somebody passing their certification, right? So I want to I want to share I want to address some things um you know just kind of clear some things up in case people are a little a little lost or confused about what what's cracking over here. So this is coming from um give me a second. Uh-oh. Give me one second. Hold on. All right, this this coming from my man's Nahian. Nahian. Um, I posted his certification. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. So I posted his certification earlier today. He passes A plus. Shout out to, if I'm jacking your name up, I, please forgive me. But shout out to Nahian, Nahian. So he passed his A plus cert on um, October 6, 2022. Um, I guess, what was that? Like a few weeks ago or something like that. He originally passed the A plus hardware back in January. And then he recently passed the software on October 6th. So, you know, for those of you guys who don't understand, right, to get your A-plus certification, you don't have to pass each test back-to-back -back immediately, meaning that you go take the test. Let's just say you take the test on June 1st or whatever. And then you're expected to pass that test by June 2nd, <laughs> the second test. Like, I believe you have like a 12 month window to pass both tests from the same series. And then once you pass the tests, both tests, you're a plus certified. And also another thing for those of you out there who don't realize that the a plus, um, 1001, 1002 series that has expired. So if you got a voucher, whether you got it from me or you got it from wherever you got it from, if you have a voucher to take the A-plus exams, hardware, software, for the 1001 and 1002 series, just understand that those vouchers are no longer valid. So you had, you had until October 20th to use those vouchers. So let's just say you bought an A-plus 1001 voucher October 1st of this year. Well, under normal circumstances, that voucher will be good until the following year, October 1st of 2023. But being that that particular series of exams expired October 20th, well, the expiration date for the exam supersedes the expiration date for the actual um, uh, voucher. And so I want to show you all. Let me find it. I got it. I got it up in here. Give me one second. Oh. So I'm probably going to put this in red, right? The terms that can, well, you guys, if you guys go through my website to buy discounted vouchers, I highly encourage you guys to read these terms and conditions because they outline the stipulations in regards to these vouchers. And one of the stipulations is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in red and move it to the top, right? Now, this, this came straight from the CompTIA website. This isn't just something I put together. All right. What's up, uh, Red Pill Finance? But when you guys buy these vouchers, you need to understand that the certification exam retirement dates, they, uh, let me make it bigger so y'all can see. All right. The certification exam retirement dates, they supersede the voucher expiration dates. So like I stated earlier, 
If you bought a voucher for the A plus 1001 or 1002 exam, under normal circumstances, you would have 12 months to use that voucher, meaning it wouldn't expire until the following year of October 1st. But being that the 1001 and 1002 A plus series, it expired, that test expired October 20th. If you didn't use those vouchers prior to October 20th, you can no longer use those vouchers. And if you want to move forward and get your A plus from here on out, you can only get vouchers for the uh, 1101 and the 1102. All right. I just want to make that clear because I recently had a conversation with somebody who didn't realize that they had the they were sitting on the 1001 vouchers. And they didn't realize that those vouchers are no longer valid. All right. So I just want to, I just want to put that out there in case you guys didn't know, but read the terms and conditions. And like I say, for those of y'all who go through my website to get a discounted voucher, I'm going to put this in red and move it up here. And the reason I got this stuff in red is because this is all based off of issues I've had in the past with people. I'm not, well, I don't want to say issues, but concerns. And so I'm like, all right, well, this is another concern that needs to be in bold, bolded and put in red so people understand what's going on. All right. So now let's let's get to the point of this video. All right. So my man's my man sent me this email. Right. A lot of people send me emails. Let me know they pass. Sometimes I'll share the message. Uh, sometimes I don't. And if I don't share it, it's normally because I'll either talk about it in a video or simply the message is too long for me to crop and put on the, uh, the YouTube community tab. But I'm going to read what he stated, right? Because there's something I want to address. All right, so my man says, as you can see, I passed both exams, 1001 and 1002, to be CompTIA A plus certified. He says, you can give me a shout out on your channel. I did, however, want to add some comments about your channel. So once again, shout out to my man. Uh, like I say, forgive me if I'm jacking your name up, uh, Nahian. If that's how you say it, I, I really don't know. But shout out to you for passing. My man goes on to say, I went through your channel videos multiple times. I used other resources to help me pass the exam. He says, getting an A plus was one of the most difficult things for me to do with a difficult full-time job as a DoorDash driver, constantly dealing with traffic all day. He says this was challenging. It says it took it says it took him almost two years to get the job done. Meaning it took him almost two years to get A plus certified. He says at first I was underestimating the difficulty of the A plus and ended up failing, losing motivation, then restarting and eventually passing. All right. So your man's is a DoorDash driver out there getting it in life, doing what he got to do. Uh, finding bits and pieces of time whenever he can get it in to study. Says it took him two years. He failed at least once, lost motivation, and somehow found some motivation and went out there and did the damn thing to get certified, right? Which is, you know, not an uncommon thing. Because, like I always tell you guys, the very first time I took the A plus certification years ago, um, I didn't study. I just went in there and freestyled it <laughs> and failed horribly. And then I had to go back in and actually study and pass the test. So, don't get discouraged if you fail an exam, all right? Um, just know that you're, you're not, you will now be, you know, if you do, we don't want you failing exams, but if you do fail, you will be a part of the club of countless tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other IT professionals who have failed certification exams before. So, you know, it's just like a, it's, it's, it's almost like a rite of passage <laughs> to a certain extent. But remember, we don't want you to fail. We want you to pass on first time goals, right? So my man goes on to say, he says, all right, so now we get into the, to the reason for this video. He says, I don't think your channel is enough to help someone pass the test, but they do build a strong foundation for a beginner. He says, I think a newbie can get very confused when he listens to your statement in one of your videos where you say, Quote, this channel has all the info you need to pass. And then he can depend on your ch on this channel and totally fail and waste his money. He says, so I think you need to edit that statement out. 
There was actually a lot more info I had to learn to pass the difficult 1001 and 1002 exams. He says it turned into a word game as the word choice of CompTIA is so tricky at times, but I overcame a mountain of challenges to pass it and now getting and now getting some attention from employers. He says, if you want to provide any assistance in me finding employment opportunities, you can help and let me know. He says, but I definitely have the determination to learn and get things done. He says, I wish I, I wish I knew your real name, Tech G. All right. So everybody wants to know what my real name is. <laughs> uh, just, just type in Tech G and go to my LinkedIn profile. My real name is posted over there. And for those of y'all who, who do consultations with me, I'll let y'all know what my real name is. Um, anyway, so let's address this. So he says, I don't think your channel is enough to help someone pass the test, but they do build a strong foundation for a beginner. So I'm going to have to disagree with you on that, that aspect, right? And the reason why I'm going to disagree with you, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Let me see. The reason I'm going to disagree with you is because I have plenty of people that have used my channel or resources I've provided to successfully pass some certification exam, IT fundamentals, A plus, network plus, and security plus, somewhat, somewhat security plus, because I'm still not done posting videos for that. And I know some of y'all are wondering why I kind of halted on that. Um, it's because I'm revving up and preparing everything for the tech G training that's to commence starting January, 2023. Um, but all that stuff will be everything. I'm basically revamping and redoing a lot of stuff, but so I had, but I got to focus on the most important element, which is the a plus. Cause that's what I'm kicking off the program with starting January, 2023 for those students who have signed up and they want to be taught in a actual virtual classroom setting. All right. But getting, getting back to what, what my man was saying, he says, I don't think your channel is enough to help someone pass the test, but they do build a strong foundation for a beginner. So first things first, you know, my channel right here, right, in the description, I don't have like one of these long drawn out descriptions, but I say that I teach people how to get started in information technology. Like that is the, that is, that is, that is the purpose of this channel, Right. I didn't create this YouTube channel aimed at seasoned IT professionals. You got other YouTubers that are out there doing the damn thing, attracting those audiences. I specifically created this channel to talk to people who have little to no knowledge about IT. And the reason why I did that is because prior to the creation of this channel, I would have a lot of people offline and online always asking me about IT. How do I get into IT? How do I do this? How do I do that? Yada, yada, yada. And for the longest, I was just out there just, you know, whenever I had time trying to answer questions, but then it got, it got to the point. I was like, there's got to be a better way than me dealing with one-on-one -on -one onesies and twosies here and there. So I created the channel. And then I really created the channel right around the time the pandemic hit. And the reason why is because I was working with a tech college and the pandemic hit, everything went virtual. So I had to find a way to create lessons for my students. And so I was like, well, let me just start a YouTube channel. And then I didn't even really think about it beyond trying to help students I was already dealing with. And then other people came to the channel and started watching it. And then it just kind of grew to what it currently is now. We're on the verge of hitting 11,000 subscribers. So shout out to all of y'all, right? But that's how the channel was, was, was initially created was to one, deal with the real life students I was dealing with. And then two, once I saw it started kind of growing, that's when I was like, well, this channel is really just going to be aimed at those who do not know anything about IT whatsoever. We're just going to focus on the ABCs and one, two, threes of IT uh, primarily because I got a lot of people that ask me, um, Am I going to teach higher level stuff like CCNA, Amazon, Azure, Pentest, some other higher level, more specific certs? And 
I've thought about it, but that would be like an off YouTube type of project, kind of like how this Tech G training program. I think for the for the, at least for right now, the YouTube channel is going to mostly focus on the entry level stuff. Um, at, at least for the foreseeable future. I mean, things may change, but that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. Because I mean, that's already a lot of information, right? To uh, try to digest and learn. Um, shout out to Jamil. You got to do the work, watch videos, take notes, do the labs and drill test style questions for the exam you wish to pass. But at the end of the day, is you doing the work? That's it. No mystery. Facts. Super facts. Uh, shout out to JS. He says, I got nothing else to say other than I really enjoy your work. Appreciate that, JS. Tell everybody about the channel. Hit the subscribe button. So, but anyway, so he says, I don't think your channel is enough to help someone pass the test, but they do build a foundation. So yes, we're, we're correct. I am trying to build the foundation. I'm trying to teach people the ABCs and one, two, threes of IT before they start trying to go out there and learn calculus and algebra and trigonometry and all this stuff. I'm, I'm literally the, the foundation. That, that's what the main purpose. Now, with that being said, I think I have a solid track record of two and a half years of posting comment after comment emails after emails uh people sending me their test results or a copy of their cert to demonstrate that a lot of people have successfully passed these exams based off of the things they have seen strictly on my youtube channel like i got the documentation here i mean i don't know other than me interviewing these people and getting them to come on camera or send me a video recording I don't know any other way to prove that, you know, it is what it is. People, they, they're getting it in. They, they're out here passing because they're sending me this information. Y'all see when I post, um, I always put my email address up here, techgclass at gmail.com, and people send this in, just like my man's who I'm responding to. He sent the same thing in, right? So people do pass. I, I don't know what else to say about that. He then goes on to say, I think a newbie can get very confused when he listens to your statement in one of your videos where you say this channel has all the information you need to pass. And then he can depend on this channel and totally fail and waste his money. So here's the thing. He says it can be confusing uh, when he listens to my statement where I say this channel has all the information you need to pass. Right. So I've said that in my videos plenty of times. Right. I don't remember the last time I said it, but I probably said it a, a few hundred times. Now, yes, I personally do think my videos have all the information you need to pass. I, I personally do, do think that, and I personally do believe it. I mean, I mean, let's, let's just let's just think about it from this. Like, I'm a business, right? This this is transformed into a business. I'm not going to downplay my business. <laughs> I'm not going to get up on here and say, I think I provide some of the best entry-level IT training on all of the internet and YouTube, but uh, wait, wait, hold up. Let me, let me rephrase that. Remember, I'm, I'm, a, I'm operating as a business here. You know, I'm providing a service product in exchange for a couple coins getting thrown my way. I'm not going to, if, if I want to be revered and recognized as one of the best IT trainers, because here's the thing. When you guys send me these messages, you guys always tell me y'all compare me up against certain people on YouTube, certain people that I never mentioned their names. And it's not because I'm scared or whatever. It's just, you know, I'm just not going to I'm, I'm not. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know, Nike giving free promotion to Reebok or something like that. You know, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of y'all send me messages and I know who all these people are. Some of them I know personally, but y'all y'all send me messages always comparing me up against these other people. And that's fine. That's cool. I don't have any issues with that. But if I'm trying to establish myself as one of the best entry level channels, IT channels, training channels, or internet resources, I don't, I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to big up myself. I think I'm going to give myself props. I'm not going to come on here and be like, yeah, I want to be, I want to be the best entry level IT guy, but then turn around and say something like, 
say something like, um, well, my channel doesn't have all the information you need to pass. I mean, does that make sense? I mean, maybe I'm wording this wrong, but I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this uh, without sounding conceited or ridiculous. I want, I want to, I would like to think that my product or what I do is superior because I've helped a lot of people get certified. So with that being said, I'm not going to come around on YouTube and then downplay my effort. So yes, if you do see me on YouTube saying, yeah, my material is all that a student would need to pass. Well, that falls in line with what I actually think about my product or service. I'm not going to get on here and be like, uh, you need to go find somebody else's stuff to help you pass. But my stuff is the best. You see what I'm saying? That doesn't even make sense. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm probably going to always say that because I personally do feel that because I put a lot of time and effort and energy into this stuff. And I believe that's evidenced by the fact that it's take, it, sometimes it takes me forever to put these doggone videos out because I go out there and I do all the nitty gritty down, you know, nitty gritty research and all this stuff to save you guys time and energy from having to go do this stuff yourself. Because part of my profession, um, for those of y'all who know my background, I was actually an analytical IT researcher where this is what I did for a living in the IT space. I would sit there and read these thick, documents, uh, technical manuals, do these deep dives on the internet and spend all day researching every little bitty thing. That was, that was, that was part of my job. So I took that same skill set. And plus I've written a million gazillion research papers in my lifetime, but you know, I got three college degrees. So I took that research stuff and I try to apply it to these slideshows. Right? So when I say that, I think my stuff is the best information you need to pass or it's all the stuff you need to pass i personally do feel that i personally do believe it and once again that's evidenced by the numerous people who send me these messages whether they're emails uh oh what happened whether they're emails whether they're um certifications you know all that all that fly stuff right well, it's not gonna let me show it all right Anyways, I posted all on the community tab. We're talking about months and months of posting this stuff and on the Instagram. So go. Let's see, I'm trying to. All right. All right, I guess I got to log in. I'm not going to log in. But anyways, it's all there. Now, that's not to say that you should only rely upon me because those of y'all who have been watching my channel for a minute, y'all y'all should be familiar with me telling you that. When it comes to preparing for a cert, you have to always keep in the back of your mind or in the front that you're the one that has to take that exam. Not me. Tech G has already passed the test that you're trying to take. The, the other people that you're getting your information from to help you study, they more than likely have already taken that exam and passed it. You're the one that has to take it. So with that being said, you have to do what you feel is best for you in order to get the results that you're trying to achieve. So if you feel like I'm just going to roll with Tech G and we're going to get it done, well, Tech G is going to tell you, hey, I am all you need to get it done. I firmly believe that and stand on that. But if you're like, hey, I'm going to roll with Tech G and I'm going to roll with this other person over here, that's fine. I'm not going to sit there and be like, you can't go do it because you're the one that has to take the test. So if you feel like you know, you're not getting all the nitty gritty understanding from me, and you need to fill in the other parts from somebody else, that's cool. I have no issues with that. Because even when I study for certs and have studied for certs in the past, I would use multiple sources. I mean, that's just how I personally got down. But once again, I learned that from the countless years I spent writing research papers when I was in college, you know, especially when I was going for my, my, uh, my, my two graduate degrees. Uh, and, you know, and then, you know, part of my and like I say, part of my, my job when I was doing analytical research, you know, I, I you know, that's kind of what we did. So I'm not I'm not. I'm not telling you that you should just solely depend on me. I'm saying if you do rock out with me. And you do what I tell you to do and actually put effort into it, you're probably going to pass. But if you feel like you need other assistance, outside assistance to help you, that's fine. Do what you have to do because you're the one that has to take the exam. I've already passed the test you're trying to study for. And so I just want you to understand that I can't take the test for you.
<laughs> you have to. So you have to get you have to you have to as a grown man or woman, you have to make the best decision in order to get the result that you desire, which is hopefully becoming certified, which shout out to my man. He did. But, you know, he says he used me and other people, and that's totally fine. I have no issues with that whatsoever. And the other people that he mentioned, you know, they they they, they seem legit. But I'm going to put myself personally above them because this is me. This is my channel. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't know any other way to like, like I say, going back to Nike and Reebok or Nike and Adidas, because Adidas is the second biggest shoe company in the world. I'm pretty sure Adidas thinks they're way better than Nike and Nike thinks they're way better than them. They both highly have great quality products, which we all know they do. But I highly doubt you'll ever hear Nike giving more props and praise to Adidas over their own product line. I mean, that's just that's just not how it works. You know what I'm saying? Um, so what else does he say? Um, he says something about, oh, this channel had, oh yeah, he says, I think a newbie can get very confused when he listens to your statement in one of your videos where you say this channel has all the info you need to pass and then he can depend on this channel and totally fail and waste his money. So he says, if somebody just strictly depends on me and then they mess around and fail and waste their money, is that really my fault or is that the fault of the person that's, that, that's relying strictly on me? And what do I mean? So, like, I've already gave my spill. I go above and beyond to try to make sure all this information is relevant, up to date, yada, yada, yada. All right? Now, once again, Tech G cannot take the test for you. I can't, I can't physically go take the exam for you, right? If I did, everybody would be passing on first-time goals if I took the test for you. But that's not going to happen. You have to go in there and take the test. So I don't know if it's fair to assume that a person would fail and potentially fail and waste their money if they relied upon one source. Based on my experience of teaching this stuff, and I'll give you a quick background in case you guys don't know. I've been in tech for 20 years, started in 2002. Out of those 20 years of being in tech, I have about seven years of teaching this stuff in some professional capacity. My last four uh, out of the 20 years in tech, I spent 13 years active duty in, in the United States Army working in IT. My last four and a half years in the military, I was actually an, a tech teacher for the U.S. Army, where this is what I did every single day. I put my uniform and my boots on. Uh, I was stationed at Fort Gordon in uh, Augusta, Georgia. There's a building out there called Dixon Hall. Right. This is the building that the recruits, the, the, uh, the troops. Once they graduated from basic training, those who signed up to become IT professionals in the U.S. Army, they would come to Fort Gordon and then they would go to this schoolhouse called Dixon Hall. In Dixon Hall, I was a teacher. I was an IT teacher for the Army for four and a half years in there. And all I did every single day was teach either A+, Network+, Security+. Uh, they learned some stuff about CCNA and some other secret squirrel stuff for the military. That, that's literally all I did for four and a half years. And we're talking hundreds of people over the course of four and a half years I've directly taught or indirectly taught or a combination of the two. And then um, two and a half years on YouTube and I've worked do, doing work with a tech college for like coming up on like three years. So we're, we're looking at like seven, seven and a half years of teaching. And with the tech college, I've taught high school kids to adults looking to switch careers. Right. So, I mean, that's that's what I've done. So I so what I'm, I'm saying all to say. I got a lot of experience teaching this stuff, right? And getting results. People getting certified, getting jobs, yada, yada, yada. I don't know if it's fair to totally put the blame on, the, on an instructor if a person doesn't get the desired results that they want because based off of what I've seen, nine times out of 10, if a person fails a cert, more than likely it's because of the person, not necessarily the instruction that they were given. I'm not saying that there aren't any flawed teachers out there. I'm not saying that there aren't any some bogus boot camps or bogus whatever you may pay for books or whatever. Yeah, that stuff exists. But I'm telling you, based off of actually being in the quote unquote field and being around people, hundreds of people over the years. 
I think I've gotten to a point where I can confidently state that if a person walks into a certification exam and they fail, there's like a 99% chance it's because of that person and not because of the instruction or the lessons that they receive. It's more than likely that person didn't properly do their due diligence in studying and preparing. Cause I did a whole video talking about how to study where I was like, you got to give yourself, if you real serious, you want to knock these things out in a, in a, in a relatively short amount, it's a reasonable amount of time. You're going to have to block off at least 30 minutes to an hour every single day, go find a happy, quiet little spot and go in there and get busy making it do what it do. But that's just what I'm telling you. So I don't think if a person fails on account of just subscribing to me and becoming a, a part of the, the tech G cult, <laughs> right? Um, I don't think, like I say, I, I, I'm just telling you based off of real life experience outside of YouTube, more than likely it's the person not properly studying or not seeking additional help, resources, yada, 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 whatever they got. Because now let's, let's talk about the tech G, right? So... Y'all know I used to put these videos up here on YouTube for free. For two and a half years, I had these videos up here for free. Nobody was watching them, right? It's a lot of time and effort went into this stuff. Nobody watched it. So I created, I, put, I was like, well, let me put them behind the memberships. Ain't nobody watching them anyway. So I put them behind a the membership, $10 a month, get you in, right? And then after YouTube takes their money, I get like six bucks. Then all of a sudden, people was like, where the videos go? I want to watch the videos. <laughs> and so some people are signed up and they're taking advantage of the stuff. Now, here's the thing about these videos, right? These videos are my slideshows that I put together, right? That I, I went out there and, and uh, you know, tried to make as professional, pretty as possible. And look, I'm not, I'm not a graphics design dude. I'm just I'm just a uh, I'm just a guy that can put a title on the slideshow and, and put some bullet points and a <laughs> and a picture on there. So if you're coming to me looking for the greatest and flashiest graphics, I ain't your dude. You know what I'm saying? I just get straight to the point and just like, hey, this is what this is what you need to know, right? Now, for some people, this is enough for them to pass a cert. They can go through all these videos and slideshows and 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 all that stuff. For some, that's enough for them to get busy and be successful. But based on my experience in doing this, I, I firmly believe if you had like 100 people watch my slideshows or anybody's slideshows, I firmly believe maybe only about five of those people could actually go through and successfully pass this stuff off of just strictly slideshows. I mean, that's that's my firm belief on that. And this is, re this is the reason why I started offering study materials, right? Now, I've revamped it somewhat. It ain't how it used to be. But um, right, let me click on this. All right. I revamped it somewhat. And this is where I was like, hey, if you need additional information beyond just slideshows, well, we got notes, virtual labs, quizzes, and practice exams to, to your heart's content. Because for the majority of people, these slideshows isn't going to cut it. You know what I'm saying? And then some are like, well, why don't I just put all this on YouTube? Well, do you know how many videos I would have to record to put this on YouTube? Do you know how long these videos would be? Like, matter of fact, when I first put my IT fundamentals course up here, my first course, I got a video on there that's like 50 minutes long. Where is it at? I was recording videos that was a half hour long, 45 minutes long. This video right here is 55 minutes long. You know how long it took me to record a 55 minute video? <laughs> took me over an hour. Nobody's trying to sit around and watch no 55 minute long video. Right? And, you know, I would, I would have to go through and just put, I don't know what the heck, I was, I was just doing stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just out here just putting stuff together. But in terms of video presentations, right? But ain't nobody really trying to watch no 55-minute video. So that's why I started breaking things down as best I could into uh, chunks of like 
10 minute long videos or, you know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes if possible. You know what I'm saying? That's what I tried to do because I knew, you know, that's that's where most people are comfortable. They're comfortable at that level of, uh, you know, watching a video. But what I'm saying is if, 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 if you're just trying to memorize my bullet, if you're just trying to get everything from the slideshows, I personally believe there's enough information in there to help you pass. But being that I've taught this in professional capacities, I just know most people aren't going to be able to just strictly go off of a slideshow because they're not going to be, they're not going to be able to, to successfully try to memorize all these bullet points and all this other stuff. So that's why I started offering um, study materials, which, which led to this stuff where I was like, Hey, if you're serious, well, here's some notes. Here's some virtual labs you can get busy with practice exams, quizzes, and all that stuff. Right. And I've had a lot of people take advantage of this stuff and they go on to pass. Right. They go on to pass. You know, I try to post screenshots whenever I can. But now that's led into the creation of this, the Tech G certification training program, where some people, even if they were to sign up, because I've had I've, I've spoke to some people, I'm doing these consultations right now. Right. So you guys want to do a consultation. You need to get on my calendar. Uh, we're approaching the holiday season, so we got to keep that in mind. But I got a couple dates open for November. And during these consultations, I've had people express to me that that have taken, that have signed up for my study notes and stuff like that for A plus when I was you know, my, uh, my A plus stuff and other things. And but they feel like they 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 need more. They need more motivation. They need they need to be held accountable because. Like I say, out of 100 people, you probably have five that may can go through just looking at somebody's slideshow presentation and pass. Out of them same 100 people, you might have another five or 10. I would say, I would say about another five to 10 people that can successfully go through and just look at some, some notes and labs and pass. The remaining 90 people or so they're going to need, they need, they need a teacher. They need somebody to explain this to them. Cause here's the thing with the videos. If you don't understand something, well, you, you can't ask me the question because you're looking at a pre recorded video, right? And chances are, I'm not going to be all up in the comments trying to answer questions like that or emails like that. Cause I mean, I got, it's just, you know, it's just not feasible. And it's kind of the same thing over here, right? Like I say, most people, they need a teacher. This is why boot camps are booming. We got, we got an A-plus boot camp down where I live. I looked it up the other day. For 10 whole days, an A-plus boot camp, and I know exactly where they're teaching this at, too. For 10 whole days, you're gonna get. They're gonna teach you A plus and uh, A plus hardware and software. You're gonna pay them two twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars for ten whole days. What's gonna happen is people are gonna go to that boot camp and they're gonna be in there for eight hours a day, getting hit with slideshow after slideshow. Ain't gonna be no lab work. Ain't gonna be none of that. But they're gonna be paying twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars, right? Well, over here, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be talking to people actually teaching as if we were actually in front in front of me like how i used to teach right where you would have the the option to ask me questions i'll go over the labs show you how to do this stuff explain stuff to you if you don't understand something here so that i can try to get you to thoroughly understand whatever questions or concerns you may have right but that but but that's how this but that's how i'm saying this because this is how most people in my opinion, will be successful at passing these certs. Um, they need to be held accountable. They need somebody to tell them to do this. They need to be feel like they're in a classroom setting, whether physically or virtually. They need that, right? 
And so I provide these different options. But regardless of all that, it's still on the individual who has to take the exam to do what's in their best interest to get themselves thoroughly prepared. Now, I'm going to keep saying it. I think I'm the best option going. I think I'm the best thing smoking, right? But it's still up to the individual to do what they got to do to uh, produce the successful outcome of passing the test, whether they roll with me, roll with someone, somebody else, roll with it, you know, me and somebody else or whatever they got to do. So I don't think it's fair to be, to assume that if a student fails because they're taking my word for it, that you could just totally fault that person without looking at, well, did the student actually do what they were supposed to do on their end? You know what I mean? Um, let me see. He says, um, there's actually a lot of info. There's actually a lot more info. I had to learn to pass the difficult 1001 and 1002. He says it turned into a word game as the word choice of CompTIA is so tricky at times, but I overcame a mountain of challenges to pass it and now getting some attention from employers. So he's talking about when he says the tricky words, he's talking about how they frame the questions on these exams. So, Let's look at this slide. So liquid crystal displays. When you go take a test for CompTIA, you're rarely ever going to have a question that'll ask you something like, what does LCD stand for? And then you'll see the selection liquid crystal display. You'll be like, all right, liquid crystal display. That's not how they're going to word these, right? They're probably going to word the question something like, uh, what is the... Uh, one of the best yet cheapest display technologies on the market that encompass the majority of televisions and, and laptops. And then they'll give you some options like LCD, OLED, uh, what is the other one? IPS or something like that. I don't know. Well, the answer would be liquid crystal, right? If we're just going to roll with that. So what I'm getting at is in order to gauge how CompT is going to put together their tests or how, how you think they're going to be structured. That's where this additional study material stuff comes in, where you get access to question to quizzes and practice exams, or you sign up for, you know, the live sessions where you get to actually take these quizzes and exams, not the real ones for the test, but you know, my version, and then ask me to explain how this stuff works in real time so that you can actually understand it. You're not going to get that with the slideshows, right? Because it would be impossible. These videos would be forever and a day long. It just wouldn't work, right? But unfortunately, like I said, I ain't going to say unfortunately, but if, you, if, you're, if you're expecting CompTIA to, like I say, ask you a simple question like, like um, I don't know. Just like I say, what does LCD stand for? they're more than likely not going to ask the questions in that manner. I can promise you that. Um, they, they're going to expect you to already know what that acronym stands for, and they're going to reword it in such a way that it's, it's more of like a, like a, like a quote-unquote math problem. You know, you get a math problem. If Johnny has two apples and he gave one apple to Susie, how many apples does Johnny have left? Over? It's going to be on some stuff like that instead of them, them, them just directly coming out asking you, what does LCD stand for? Right. But that's where additional study aids, whether you know, it's on some self-study stuff or it's on some teacher led training stuff. That's where that stuff could be extremely beneficial for you. And like I say, at least with my program and the students who have signed up, when I start teaching them starting January 2023, they're going to have all the time in the world to ask me every single question that they want until I, I, until I make it make sense for them in the best way that they can comprehend. That is the real purpose of why I'm doing this program is because I want, like I say, you know, during the consultations, I always tell students, uh, candidates, I want you to understand what the heck it is you're learning instead of you trying to memorize stuff just so you can pass a test. I want you to actually understand how this works, what it is, why is this thing even exists? How does this actually tie into the overall infrastructure Yada, yada, yada. 
so that you can actually understand what's going on as opposed to let me just memorize what LCD stands for, right? And then if people don't understand it beyond that, then they can ask me, hey, uh, Tech G, uh, why is it LCD and and, and 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 how do the layers work and and what, what is this liquid crystal? You know what I'm saying? They can ask me stuff like that. And if it's not beyond the scope of the class, I'll address what, what it actually means in real time. All right. So, anyways, I just want to I just want to share that real quick. Um, like I say, shout out to my man's that sent this in. This is no shade or anything, you know what I'm saying? I think this is a somewhat of a teachable moment. Um, once again, he passed, and he's like I say, he uses the aid of me and other people. And that's fine. I have no issues with that. I mean, he's not the first. There are other people who said the same thing. But the only reason I made I wanted to make a video because you know I had to clear up this thing, this misconception of where he's he's uh, basically stating that I think he's implying that how I present the information is too challenging for a complete newbie. But I would beg to differ disagree because I have like I said, you scroll through this community tab or you just go straight to my Instagram po page. I got like mad comments and, and, and certifications and emails and all this other stuff from people who have just used strictly me to pass who were complete newbies to it. So I'm saying that to say, I don't know if it's, I, I personally don't, I, I disagree with him on that. Because I, I got a lot of people that have used my stuff to successfully pass. And they, like I said, they've told me that. They, they rocked out with me. All right, I've had people say that they were listening to somebody else and then they came over to me because they like how I taught versus how the other person taught who's way more popular than me. And some of y'all probably know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's me somebody else, a combination of us two or whatever, you're still the one that has to go sit down and take the exam. So you have to do what's in your best interest to make sure you're getting all the information that you feel you need to get, whether it's coming from one source, multiple sources, whatever, because you're the one that has to go in there and pass that test. And like I say, we're hope, hoping, at least my goal is that hopefully you take my information and you pass on the first time go. That, that's the goal. But even if you have to go back and redo it, hopefully, you know, you, you, you prepare yourself as best you can to take the test because I can't take it for you. This person who teaches it over here can't take it for you. The, the tech college, the boot camp in your local city, they can't take the test for you. Only you, only you are allowed to go in there and take that test for you. Right? So you have to put yourself... You have to do what you have to do to get yourself as best prepared so that you can hopefully have a positive outcome and not potentially waste any money. You understand what I'm saying? So um, but once again, shout out to my man's over here, Nahin. Um, I think that's how you pronounce your name, bro. I don't know. But um, hopefully that clarifies some things up. Also, shout out to those of y'all who have been booking appointments. Um, now, here's the thing about these appointments, right? So I put this, I put this up here for a reason. If you're not serious, don't book an appointment because I've had quite a few people or no shows. Now, life probably happens. Can't control life. Maybe something happened. They couldn't. But my thing is, if you're going to book an appointment, because I show up to every last one of these appointments, I'm on the, I'm, I'm you know, before, before y'all log in to click the link to talk, I'm already there waiting on you to show up. Right. And then sometimes if you don't show up, I'll sit on these conferences by myself for at least 10 to 15 minutes, hoping that you show up. And then if you don't show up, then I cancel the appointment, send you an email to try to reschedule. My thing is I'm a real stiffler for being on time. And you can blame that on me being in the military. Um, I've, I've always been one of these people. I show up 10 minutes early. Uh, you know, if you show up 10 minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, don't even show up. That's that's the motto I go by with everything in life. I, I do not like being late. I do not like wasting people's time when I book appointments. I always get there at, at the bare minimum 10 minutes early, right? So my thing is, 
If you're going to book an appointment, right, and you plan on showing up, please show up or cancel the appointment beforehand if you know you're not going to make it. So I'm not sitting around waiting on you because I could be using that time to either do something else or that slot could have been, or, or I could have re, or I could have re, uh, reposted that schedule, that that appointment time for somebody else who may have had the time to uh, try to use it. So I mean that that's, I would I would incur, I, I would uh, appreciate if you know some of y'all would take that into consideration for those y'all who plan on potentially booking an appointment. All right, because I, I, like I said, I'm just I'm just not a I do not like wasting time. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of being on time. But yeah, but shout out to those of y'all who have showed up. Appreciate that. And y'all have talked to me. Shout out to those of you who have actually signed up. And shout out to those of y'all who are still, you know, weighing your decision as to sign up. You know, do what you got to do. But January 2023, we will be starting class. And I will be teaching A, Network Plus, and Security Plus. And the goal is to get you guys certified. First time goes. And there's some other stuff in the program that I will be doing with you that I talk about during the consultation. And also for those of y'all who are sending me emails asking how much it costs, right? Well, book an appointment, right? And I know some of y'all are like, why don't you just tell us? Because I don't, I don't want to tell you. One, it's not super expensive. I don't personally think it is, but it's not super expensive. But the way it's the way the price is structured, I have to explain it to you, right? Because if I just threw you a number out there, you'd be like, oh, that's too much. Oh, all right, that's cool. I'll sign up. No, I want to explain it to you how the struct the pricing works. Because it's not just as simple as me saying, hey, this is what it is. All right. So that's why it's consultation. So, you know, those of y'all sending me messages on Instagram and the emails. If you, if you do that, I'm going to tell you to book a consultation, man. I'm not, I'm not going to be answering that question. All right, uh, so that's it. That's all I want to talk about. So shout out to uh, my mans one more time. Um, congrats on passing. Like I say, this dude, and here is the, I want to get this guy big ups, man. Like I say, I'm not, I wasn't trying to beat him up, but your mans is out here as a, as a Uber Eats guy, running around here driving, delivering people's food, right? I, delivering people's, I think he said he did that full time. So I think that it is extremely commendable where he found the time over the course of two years to still try to pass this cert as he's out there being a full-time Uber Eats delivery guy. So I think that's commendable. Like there was another guy I posted like last year. I need to follow up with him to see what's going on, but he was working at a 7-Eleven as like a, as like a cashier at the 7-Eleven. He sent me a picture with his laptop out and he was watching my videos as he was on shift at the 7-Eleven. Right. And I thought that was pretty cool because so I guess the point I'm trying to make is if this is what you really want to do, you want to get into tech, regardless of what you currently do for a living. You know, if this is what you really want to do, you you, you gotta you gotta make that time. You gotta get it in however you can get it in. Right. And like I say, with your man's right here, he passed the hardware back in January, and then he successfully passed the software this October. So we're talking like a span of nine months between both tests. I think as long as he passed within that 12, that 12 month window, he was good. And now he's a plus certified. See what I'm saying? So hopefully he'll be able to use that because he sent me a copy of his resume. And shout, oh, that's another thing. Uh, so I got people sending me resumes, right? Uh, he sent me a resume and this other guy. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably try to help you all out. But I don't know if I'm gonna make this a habit because I did, I did, I did advertise. I did resume services, but I, I took that off because I was like, I don't know if I can sit here and dedicate all this time to writing resumes for people. But I, I'll consider helping you out because I know he sent me a copy of his, and this other guy sent me a copy, of, and this other guy is really interesting. This other guy, I'm not gonna say who he is, but his background is stellar in terms of everything that you would need that you would think somebody would need to get started in it he had it experience uh, a stem degree uh i think he was security plus certified and there was some other stuff on there 
He's like, yo, I'm having a hard time getting a job. I was like, what the heck? Like, you got everything going for you that you need to get a job. They should be begging you to come work for them. So I was like, I asked him some questions. I was like, so, you know, do you got a criminal history? Or are you, you know, like, like there's, there's something going on here. Like, because I, I don't, you know, I, I, obviously I don't know. He sent me a copy of his resume and I looked at it. I was like, oh, that's probably what it is right there. <laughs> so, so I kind of looked at it. I was like, I think I figured out what the issue is. And so I'm going to help this dude with his resume. And hopefully once I finish tweaking it, that'll produce a positive result in terms of him getting interviews. Cause I think he was saying that he was struggling just to get a job interview. Like I said, I look, I was like, there's no way in the world you're struggling. It's either you got a, you either got something crazy in your past that you're not telling me about, or are they pulling up some information on you? But he was like, nah, I ain't got none of that. And then, like I said, he sent me a copy of his resume. As soon as I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is why you're probably not getting interviews. So I'm going to help this dude out by tweaking his resume. Because I, I, because what it is, I looked at it and I immediately saw what was wrong with it. I was like, so I'm not going to go into the details about what I saw, but it was, it stood out like a, like a sore thumb. And I was like, all right, let me help this dude out. So I say all that to say, I'll help you guys out. And like I say, that'll actually be a part of the tech G training program, right? Like I say, we talk about this in the consultations, but that'll actually be a part of this where for those of y'all who need assistance, I'll lend my assistance to you and help you tweak your resume and doing whatever I got to do to help you land your first job. So that'll be a part of that program as well. In case you're interested, like I said, if you are interested, hit the link. I'm going to put, I'm going to post it up in here. Hit the link, get on the calendar. Uh, we'll, we'll get you squared away out in these streets, right? So we can um, get you uh, get you right. Hey, Tech, I'm new to this. Which video of yours should I start off with? Shout out to Troy. All right. Well, that depends, Troy, how much you know about tech. So if, here's the thing, Troy. If you know absolutely diddly squat about IT, like all you know is this is an iPhone, and this is a laptop, but you, you don't know what the heck these things do beyond you looking at TikTok videos and YouTube videos. Start with this course right here. This is absolutely free. IT Fundamentals, all these videos are free. You can either go through and watch all these wonderful videos I recorded, or you can just watch the one big video where I took all the smaller videos and put them into one giant video. You go watch this. 10 hours of pure hot fire. <laughs> 10 hours of pure, wonderful knowledge. But this is, but if you don't know anything about IT, start here. If you know a little something about computers, you know what RAM is, you know what a motherboard is, a system board, you know, you, you, can, you, you can talk it a little, a little something, something, then start here. Now understand this particular exam has expired, but who cares? The newest exam is 1101. 97% of that information is identical to this exam right here. So you can go watch this joint right here or watch all these wonderful videos, right? So you start with IT fundamentals if you know nothing, absolutely nothing. If you know a little something, some start with A+. Plus. Then from A+, plus, go to Network+, plus, then Security+. Plus. Now understand, um, Troy, I don't know if you're new here, but these videos aren't free. They used to be, but they're not anymore. So I, 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 I let some be free, but you'll see these joints that say members only. So you're gonna have to go hit this button right here, become a member, and you can sign up for $10 a month and you get access to all that information, man. $10 a month, you know what I mean? I think, you know, I, I personally think that's a hell of a deal. <laughs> I think that's a hell of a deal for ten dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? But you get access to all that stuff. And then once you pass and you send me your information, I give you a shout out on the wall of fame over here, man. Letting everybody know you out here doing things with your life. If that ain't if that ain't enough for you, go hit this link, my man. Get on the calendar where I will teach you live over the internet live you know what i'm saying and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that i don't put on youtube so if you're interested in that route go click that link 
scroll, read all this wonderful copy I put together, scroll down here and pick a date and a time. Like let's say pick a date and a time, get on the calendar, and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one consultation live over the internet so, as long as you show up. And I'll explain exactly every how this thing, this whole thing works, everything you're going to get from me, the whole complete structure and breakdown of how I plan on teaching it, what you're going to learn, what the expected outcomes are going to be, how long it's going to be, how much money it's going to be, how the money actually works, and yada, 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 and all the stuff. And I'll break it all down to you, man. So get on my calendar if you want to go, if you want to be taught live over the internet. So we treat it like, I treat it like, it's going to be treated like a real class that you will go sign up for university or tech college you come into tech g's quote unquote tech college you understand all right well like i said i gave you the options you got to figure out which one rolls best for you but if you ain't ready to commit to anything that's cool just go start here man just go here As a matter of fact it's my most popular video on my channel um right here comp to your it fundamentals 10 hour video if you don't feel like watching all 10 hours, just go straight to the playlist where this is at. And all the videos are broken down into their own individual videos. But a lot of people just watch this video right here. If you know nothing. All right. Those are your, those are your options. All right. Anyways, y'all, I'm about to chuck deuces. I got to go do some stuff. Shout out to Earl in the his house. Uh, any questions before I roll up out of here? Any questions? Any more questions? Um, did I miss some comments? Let me read this. I still turn to this channel. Not only did I pass ITF along with two other certs, but certs directly got me an IT job with a top hardware software manufacturer working on Apple certs before A+. Shout out to Jamil. He sent me his stuff a few weeks back. Appreciate Jamil. He's out here doing things in life. Y'all all can be doing things, man. The hardest part about getting these certs is just making the time to study for them. That's it. Once you make the time, you commit to it, and you take it serious, notes, pencil paper, uh, pens and paper, highlighters, whatever it is you got to do, you'll pass. But like I say, based off of all the years I've been teaching this, the number one reason I think people don't do it is because people don't put the effort into it that's that's my personal opinion based off of what i've seen others might tell you different but i'm just telling you what i've saw but anyways uh that's it i'm about to go y'all be uh have be great have a be great whatever y'all y'all have a great day y'all be safe out in these streets and uh like i say once again go book you go book your appointment if you're trying to get on the calendar all right y'all be safe peace Hit the subscribe button. Peace.